Hey, everyone. It's the Drive School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. Pastor Richard, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, Good man, to see it's you. getting nice here in North Dakota. Man, I fertilized the lawn. This <laughs> I, I, Two weeks ago, I fertilized the lawn. I literally fertilized it when it was snowing out. And so I'm like, I better do it again. So I did it yesterday, and it's sun is shining. Grass is turning green. So it's pretty Everybody's awesome. Everybody's kind of starting to look forward to summer break. Um, I, I know drive school goes offline at the end of the month, but but like right now, uh, it, there's that countdown. My kids are are looking forward to summer. They're looking forward to, to what they're not going to have to do. Like, Because this is actually sort of the thing when you start to describe uh, summer break, it, it's it's always it done in absence. I can't wait to not. And, and then they'll just list all the things. Um, and it's it's actually made me sort of reflect on, on just sort of how much we, we have ours running through. We never wanted to be sort of the super busy one activity after another parent. And we we still kind of are anyway, and and that's even with pretty minimal stuff. Um, it, it's it's gotten to the point where where rest is only sort of ever talked about in the absence, and that doesn't necessarily strike me as healthy. So so, Pastor, what does Jesus say about about rest? Yeah, well, he says to Pastor Richard and his family, you need to rest. I mean, mm-hmm. that's for sure. I mean, I, just the same thing with you guys. Um, just going. I mean, this time of season, just going. Uh, but summer does present an opportunity of rest uh, to unplug, so forth. Um, but I think I think we should really, you know, consider this: uh, the family itself. I mean, what, look at the essence of a family. Uh, mm. So we look at the different vocations, right? One of the aspects of the family, obviously, is in the family. There's work, the vocation of work to work for what uh, for a boss and to work to make and provide. But really, the reason why you work is to have a, a safety place to come back home. And so, if you think about the the home, the home should and and. You know, God have mercy when it's not, but the, the home should be a place of safety for children, a place for a husband and wife to come back home. And so in a lot of ways, you go out in your vocations um, and you get beat up by life. You get beat up in the marketplace of goods. Uh, you get beat up in school. Uh, you get beat up in sports. And it's just it's just kind of a bloodbath out there oftentimes with uh, man with a hierarchy of ranking and, com- and, and comparing, um, you know, competition and so forth. But that family in that uh, place of the house should be that one place where you come back and you can kind of just let your guard down and just rest. And like I said, when that doesn't happen with families with potential abuse and so forth, we just say, God have mercy. But that family to come back and to rest, uh, that's good for a father and mother to rest, uh, to rest in their marriage. Children rest underneath the protection of their parents, knowing that mom dad, mom, dad have got it, that there's plenty of food, that there's maybe warmth or air conditioning, that there's a nice warm blanket and a book, uh, mm-hmm. just to recharge from, well, this veil of tears, perhaps we say it that way. Yeah, and I think that that in a lot of ways too, it, it's it's not just sort of what you're avoiding, but but what you're actually getting. And we do this with the word comfort a lot too. We talk about you know what's comfortable, and we always mention sort of the the absence of uncomfortable things. But but if God is comforting us, it's not an absence of evil, but a presence of good. And in the same way, when when we're we're given a place to rest, it's not just a place away from work and a place away from stress and away from um, sort of the, the measurables of, of, of the law, but it's, it's uh, that, that, you know, always be enough, always, always rank high enough, always get the grades. It's also a present of, of good thing. Um, this is, this is where you're given a family. This is where you're, you're given uh, a, a vocation that, that is actually a, a place to, to sort of lean in. And I know this because I do it wrong. Um, I, I caught it the other <laughs> night, actually, like we, we were um, the one of the blessed rare nights where we're not running to Taekwondo or, or, or some of the other things, even confirmation. Um, but we're all sitting in the living room and I'm reading about basketball on my phone. And my wife is is reading a book uh, because she is higher brow than I am. And my son is playing video games and my daughter is is on on her tablet. And we're in the same room and completely ignoring each other. And it, it's not the point, I don't think. Um, what if there actually was somebody there that was actually safe enough, not only to, to talk to, because like, wouldn't it be great if we all got along, but, but also somebody there who is, is so firmly rooted in your life because God has put them there that you can fight with them. And, yeah. and that might actually be a sign that things are right, not things are wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, same thing with us. The other day we had a we had a meal. It's been a while because my my obviously my my daughter's in softball, my son's in track, and my my little one Allie's in taekwondo too as well. And and we're just go go. And we we came back and we had a family meal and we were fighting at the table. And my wife goes, "It's okay, sweetie. We haven't done this in a while." Huh. <laughs> you know, right? But 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 God be praised that we could actually have a fight at the dinner table and have some disagreements and so forth. Uh, as a family, you know, maybe, maybe circling all this around and, and I, I, it's kind of maybe a hobby horse of mine, but I always like to say, we're always chasing Eden. We're always mm. chasing the garden of Eden. And if you think about the garden of Eden and, and just how 
great it was. I mean, Adam and Eve, they, they, they were there with each other. Uh, they were naked and there was no shame. And so between the two of them, there was no competition, no struggle. Uh, between them and God, it was completely fine with them and the ecology of the land. I mean, there was no thorns and thistles. Uh, so they had complete harmony of of, of, of their mind and their body and, and with each other and with God and with the land. Everything was just absolutely perfect. And then sin, it wreaked havoc on that. And so in a lot of ways, uh, the family uh, ought to be, and it often isn't, so we repent when it's not, but the family ought to be a, a glimpse of Eden, you know, mm-hmm. a glimpse of safety, a, a glimpse of goodness, uh, to have love and care with with the um, family, uh, with in the presence of God Almighty and his grace and his forgiveness and his love. And so uh, in a lot of ways, we, we, we do chase after Eden. We chase after the rest of Eden. And one of those places we can have a glimpse of it, uh, as imperfect as it is, is going to be that, that, that family. I'm going to even push on it too. This might even be a place to chase the cross uh, where everything actually that, that was hidden gets brought to light. Um, there, there's a lot of places where you just bite your tongue, where you're not going to have a fight with a stranger because it's not worth it. I'm never going to see you again. You're not actually worth the time and energy. And I actually just need to sort of breathe through it and ignore you. Uh, to have somebody in your life where you feel comfortable enough to actually voice what's wrong is a good gift from God. Uh, because here you're not rooted in ignoring sin where I ignore most of what's wrong in the world because there's nothing I can do about it. But, but to actually be able to have a fight at dinner, uh, it, it recognizes not only am I sort of stuck with you guys, but but at the end of this, we're going to be forgiven together. Yeah. Um, th- there's there's something truly, truly blessed in, in the people who are given to you and, and close enough to you where, where rest isn't just sort of like escaping everything that's wrong, but but confronting it and, and finding Christ at the center of it. it it's, it's a place then to go. Uh, one of my seminary professors was was big, big on the idea of, of table fellowship, that, that one of the greatest things in the world you get to do is try to take communion with your family. Like, like, especially once your, your kids are, are of an age where, where this is a, a place they can go, even then bring them up for a blessing so that your baptism is rooting you together. But, but to actually kneel side by side with, with your family and say, like, this is all of the fights being forgiven. Yeah. And here, this is a meal that, that we're joined together at that's going to carry forward outwards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I mean, it's good. It's, it's, I don't know how to say it even better, but it, man, just to be able to, well, I mean, think of it this way too, rest is also the rest of the conscience, right? Mm. And so our conscience is at peace. Mm. And to be able to work through, I mean, you can have absolutely the, all the rest of the world. You can have a you know a nice lawn chair and a nice beach, maybe uh, coming down on your face, maybe a little pina colada or whatever, <laughs> you know, just add with a little with you know, a little umbrella, right? Oh, that yeah, everybody yeah. has. But then you could be totally not at rest because your conscience may be tied in a you know several thousand knots. Mm. But to be able to work through in the family, to work through those those complications and to forgive. Um, and to to have the forgiveness of sins <clears throat> pronounced on each other and to 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 be absolved uh, gives a peace of conscience and and that is to flourish in the house as well. And when that does, boy, to have that peace of conscience when you when you're going home, you're not dreading going home, but when you're going home, you know that's a place where what it's reality mm-hmm. uh, that so much of life is is as you and I know it, so much of life is fake and so much, you know, it's all the masks that we wear and all the things that we do in culture. When I say we, the whole culture itself, how much we pretend and we play act and we do all these things and we hide behind all of our insecurities and so forth. But to come to that home and <clears throat> to lay it all out and uh, yeah, to fight and to forgive, uh, that's reality and that's rest, to have a restful conscience, uh, knowing that uh, really, really forgiven and loved uh, to the point of working through things. I think it even shapes the body too. Cause like I've had those days, I'm sure you have too, where you, you actually did nothing and you felt somehow worse at the end of it. Like, like yeah. slothful, yeah. ugly, just gross by the end of not doing anything than the day. Like if I had just gone out there and done the chores that I knew I was supposed to, I would feel rested physically and spiritually and, and, and mentally, and just sort of actually feel more fit to go forward. It's, it's sort of the same thing with homes. Uh, it, we, we sort of talk about, you know, summer break is all the things I'm not going to have to do. And we can talk about families like this safe place, but if you're just going to let it all fester, it feels gross after a while. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. actually work through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it provides an opportunity. Maybe perhaps to summarize all this, it pro- provides an opportunity. Summer provides an opportunity for us to be together more. Mm. And that's a good thing. I mean, if you think about uh, in scripture, what happens, typically what happens, like we think of the Tower of Babel, right? Uh, they're, they're, they're spread. Sin spreads us. Sin puts gaps in between us and our family and our loved ones. And then how the uh, Lord's table brings us together and how the gospel brings us together. Forgiveness of sins, uh, confessing sins and absolution brings us together. And so summer summer affords that opportunity potentially and hopefully to bring us together more. And that's good. Families, when they're together, that's mm-hmm. good. And with all the warts and all the struggles and all the problems that happen, uh, God's grace is sufficient to forgive and to work through that so that you can be together as a family. And that's where rest is. 
I love it. Pastor, thanks so much. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good to see you, Harrison. You too. Bye.